I had a few people ask me how I edit photographs. And so I thought that I would do a video. Uh, most people use a program called Light Table. You'll find all kind of tutorials for it on YouTube and other places on the net. Uh, most pros use Lightroom. It's a standard. The problem I have with Lightroom is threefold. First of all, Lightroom costs money. And I don't know how much, but I'm sure it's above my ability to, to purchase. Also, with Lightroom, once you purchase it, you've got to have a monthly subscription. They store everything on the cloud. None of it is stored on your computer. And uh, Lightroom, you have to have a subscription and pay it every month in order to keep the program running and all of that. Also, everything's stored on the cloud, and if you leave Lightroom and you don't download all your data, you might not end up in a situation where you can't access that section of the cloud that has your account on it, so you can't get to your pictures. So all of that, to me, means that I don't want anything to do with Lightroom. So I chose a freeware program called Darktable. Darktable is free and open source. It's a powerful video editor or a powerful raw file editor, excuse me, that works really well for me. And when I, when you first look at Darkroom, Darktable, Darkroom, You'll see, all right, my white balance, the little on-off switch here, is lit up. That means this mo module is active. Well, it's active because I choose automatic white balance in my camera. And so, Darktable recognizes, if you come over here, that I shot this with a Canon EOS 40D. And I used a Canon EF 75-300 F4 to 5.6 telephoto lens at shot it at f8 and one four hundredth of a second so they know it knows the program knows what I shot it with and it recognizes the automatic white balance setting in this file it, that information was recorded in the raw file now if you come up here you'll see there's another module that's active. It's called the base curve. If you look at it, that's what that base curve look like, looks like. And this base curve is a base curve that Darktable applies that they think is similar to what a JPEG base curve would look like on an EOS 40D. Because if you take that out, that's what a raw file looks like with, let me kill white balance. With nothing applied to it. Okay, so white balance there. But that's still quite a dull picture, right? So Darktable added a basically a JPEG base curve. Now I can go in and adjust that base curve however I want to, if I choose to. But that looks pretty good to me, and I generally just keep that. The only other thing that's active is the sharpen module and that is because I chose within that camera a particular style of, of uh, picture that has a certain type of sharpness associated with it. Darktable can read that information in the raw file and it applied it to the photograph. So when I first start looking at photographs to take pictures of. Understand that this is a digital camera. It's not a film camera. I'll have a limited number of uh, exposures like I would in film. Uh, I've got as many exposures as I want that the memory card in my camera will hold. So I take 5, 10, 15 shots of whatever it is that I'm taking a picture of if I 
have the opportunity. I have my uh, camera set on a low, uh, oh, I forget what it's called, but it's where the camera will continue to take pictures as long as you hold the trigger down or as long as the buffer doesn't fill up. But I have it on, there's a high speed uh, and then there's a low speed. And I got, I've got it on low so it ch 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 takes pictures about that fast. And I just, I take several so that I know that the chances are good that I have a really nice sharp shot in there somewhere. Because that's what you want. Uh, the sharpness adjustments in these programs are not designed to take a picture that you did not focus properly or get properly sharp and sharpen them up to where they look right. They're designed to enhance the sharpness you already achieved when you took the shot. So what I will do to, is I'll, okay, I chose this grasshopper. Well, I have several. If you look, I'm moving back and forth through them. I have several shots of that. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll come up here to this little square box here, and you won't be able to see the drop-down menu, I don't think. Uh, sometimes this program I'm using to record this doesn't show it. But I'll hit this, and I'll go down here and increase magnification to 100% so that I can see what I'm looking at. And I've got excellent sharpness throughout, but particularly here on the face and the eye. So I know that this is sharp. So I'm going to take this and use this. Let me put it back where it's supposed to be. That's the one that I chose. But now if you look at it, let's go back to 100%. There's a lot of noise in this picture. Now you have three choices. You have profiled denoise. And this says it found a match for ISO 800, which is what I shot this with. For this particular camera, it found a match a profile in noise reduction that'll work. This is the one I generally use and I'll show you uh, what it looks like in a minute. But you also have a bilateral filter. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to cut this to adjust the distortion in the different color ranges. So you see all this distortion here? Well I could take green and just clean that if I wanted to. I could clean that right up. But for me, I don't use that one very often. The third one is denoise, a non local means. And it lets you adjust light, which is luma, how much to smooth the brightness, or chroma, how much to smooth the colors. But this one is a resource hog, so if you use that, you want to use it last after all your other adjustments are done. So I don't use that one either because it sucks too much resources. I generally take the profiled, and it says it found a match, so I apply that, and it cleans it right up. The next thing you want to look at, let me put this back where is exposure now my exposure is that manual the automatic if I choose that here we go it says that's what the exposure should look like well I much prefer that so I'm gonna leave that right there and the next uh, module we come to that I have anything to do with is lens correction and you see it recognizes the camera that I have. It recognizes the lens, except that it says that I have image stabilization, which I don't. But these two lenses, the one with and the one without image, image stabilization, are basically the same. Uh, so this will work for the lens that I'm using. And it has down here a correction for what it thinks all, because I've got it set to all here, the different problems this lens might have might need in corrections. 
or I can, and I know you won't see this, but I'm going to hit a drop down menu. I can adjust distortion and chromatic aberration. I can adjust distortion and vignetting. I can adjust chromatic aberration and vignetting. I can only adjust the distortion or only the chromatic aberration or only the vignetting, but I always choose all. And you see it came on. And let me shut it off again. If I can find it. Okay. Now that's with it off. When I turn it on, you see how it kind of flattens it out? That's because this is a telephoto lens and it's prone to what's known as barrel distortion, which kind of makes the surface of the picture sort of look around or bulgy. And the lens correction corrects that. Now, even the expensive lenses have some kind of aberration, unless you, uh, I mean, it's just almost impossible to create a lens anybody can afford that doesn't have a little bit of that so it, you know some have more some have less but you can correct for a lot of it and most lenses are perfectly usable if you use lens correction and to be quite honest with you a lot of people just average ordinary, ordinary people would not even notice what we would notice as a problem in the first place the next thing we want to do look at is cropping and rotate crop and rotate rotate means now you see this line this is uh i forget what it's called uh, the rule of thirds there's a couple of different settings you put it on but for composition i use rule of thirds a lot so and that means you have this section this section and this section they're all split into thirds and they're split into thirds this way and i can put an object at any of these four corners and it'll give me different compositions different looks uh, that's simplified but cropping what you're doing is you're basically zooming in you have to be careful with cropping with a, a photograph of this a, a picture that has so little meta megapixels in it my camera has this camera has 10 megapixels so you want to be careful but you see what that did it brought it in close a lot of times when you don't have a lens that is long enough or you don't have a way to get any closer cropping is an option that you can use but I would I would crop and use that again the basic curves already set denoise bilateral filter I don't use the next one up is haze removal and to me what this does is it's something similar to a clarity slider now this is you can adjust your strength and your distance in the picture but I don't do any of that I just turn it on and see what it does and you see everything got clearer everything got a bit sharper the picture got a bit warmer the colors were enhanced a bit okay to me that's a lot like a clarity slider so I'm just gonna take what it gave me because I like that look If you look at it, let's take it off. It's just, that's a much better picture. You can see, like if you look in here, watch, watch that. Now you begin to see more, much more detail in the leaves and, and much more detail in all of the picture. So that works for me. Again, vibrance is something that basically enhances your mid-tones. But to me, I mean, if you look at it, it doesn't really do a whole lot. There's a subtle kind of thing there. Bloom here is the biggest waste of time. If you do that, it enhances highlights, but that looks like garbage to me. So I don't use it. Denoise, non-local means I don't use. So the next thing I would do is look at shadows and highlights. Now with this, you can raise or lower your shadows or your highlights. You can adjust your white point. You can soften it. You can compress it, 
you can adjust the colors in your shadows or the colors in your highlights. What I do is just turn it on and see what the program gives me. And I like that because if you look at it, it makes this, this brighter. Shut it off. So that you get more of an effect of the light coming through it. And then, let's shut it off again. Look in here. When I turn it on. It brightens that. And this is the subject. You want a good bit of brightness on the subject. Generally in a photograph, your eye is drawn toward the brightest area in that photograph. So you really want your subject to be well lit. So I'm going to keep that. I could adjust those if I needed to, but that looks good to me. The next module that comes up is an equalizer, what they call an equalizer. And it will adjust, let me go up here, you won't see the drop down, but I'm going to hit the drop down. It will adjust the bloom or the highlights, your clarity, it will it'll adjust noise, it will sharpen, you can do all kinds of things with it. What I'll do is I use it to sharpen, so I, I focus on these two center because if you look at it, it has, if I hit that, I don't know if you can see that, but it says coarse there, contrasty here, and fine here. So anything on this side will adjust any kind of big, uh, coarse looking objects, like stuff like this. If I go over here to fine, it'll, it'll adjust stuff that doesn't have an awful lot of detail or that has really fine detail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the middle here and I'm just going to raise it up a bit. Let's uh, put it on 100%. Okay, let's... And I'm going to just take... You see how it's subtly just kind of sharpening things up? That's all I use that for is to sharpen. If we fit it to screen again, that's an improvement. Color zones can be used. I can take it and adjust any of the color zones in this photograph that I want. Or I can hit this little arrow and you see it puts a little square. I can put that square any place I want to. And it'll give me a little line over here that tells me where on this graph that color is most prominent at. And I can raise or lower. In fact, I am going to raise that just a hair. And I'm going to put it over here. You see, it's almost exactly the same here. So... Let's just do that. Let's leave it there. Then we come to contrast, brightness, saturation. I like a bit of contrast. You have to be careful with contrast because contrast increases noise. But And then you have brightness, which you can adjust. And I am going to back down just a hair. And then saturation, which is the saturation of the colors. And I'm going to pull that up. But I'm not going to go too far because I don't want it to look unnatural. But I kind of like that because what you got is you got the light coming through this leaf. And hitting the subject as well as the light in front. And it, it just, that looks really nice. And to my eye. Now your tone curve. You can adjust. All along the spectrum. But most photographers like a, a slight S. And so what I'm going to do. Is I'm just going to. Do that. You see what it did to the photograph. And I'm going to come back down here now. Since I did that. And back down to saturation. 
just a hair. All right. You want when you make an adjustment, you kind of want to look at it. You might want to go back and adjust something else. Once you make an adjustment, it might change something. Now sharpness. There's already a sharpness applied, but I'm gonna just add just a hair more. You gotta be careful with sharpening because what can happen is you can begin to get like highlights around the subject if you sharpen too much and it's ugly looking and not something that you want. The last couple of things I do is I use a vignette. Now a vignette basically is kind of a darkening of the corners. But what I do is I'll pull it in a bit and then I'll take and pull it down to the eye. On a living subject you want the eye to be in focus whether you're doing portraits or, or anything else. And then what I'll do is I'll come up here and kind of squash that so that when I get the final result this is the brightest thing that I can find in that photograph. That's what I want. The last thing that I do is apply a watermark. Now you can choose text, you can choose okay you can say dark table and it'll tell you I can put it down here and it'll say okay dark table did this and this is all the information but yada 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 uh, there's a couple of different things you can do you have a simple text editor that kind of deal but I have a preset that I stored and it's just my signature you see it down here in the bottom left and I will raise the scale a bit so that and if I want to I can move it over here and that's what I'm going to do because that is easier seen and that photograph is finished. There's your final result. Now if I wanted to edit or export this, I would go over here to light table. And I would move down here. And you see I have a, it tells me target storage. And I have a file in my pictures file labeled dark table that this will, uh, export to and I've got the quality I've got it set for an 8 peg 8 bit JPEG which is uh, accepted almost anywhere on the internet and then 100% quality and I would hit export and export that photograph uh, if I wanted to export it and I would be done now all the information in this file would be retained None of this is changed or altered in any way. I could I could go right back to this file and edit it a hundred times if I wanted to. Uh, all it does is create a JPEG and put it in a file on my folder, on my pictures folder. And if I wanted to edit this a hundred times, I could have a hundred JPEGs with a hundred different edits on it. It's all saved on my computer. I don't have to worry about the cloud or anything like that. And, to me, it's a great editor. It's a wonderful, powerful, free editor. Now, there's one other thing that I would mention. Most of your camera companies, Canon, Nikon, or Nikon, or however you want to pronounce that, they have software you can download or software that will come with the new cameras that does the same thing Darktable, Lightroom, and everybody else does. And uh, they're specific to your camera. So that's another option. You get that with the camera or you can go online to the website and download it. It won't cost you anything. And uh, that's an option, uh, another free option that works really well. I have the Canon version on mine, but I like the way, the flow, the workflow in Darktable a lot better. So you have, whatever program you get, you got to learn it. And uh, there's plenty out there. Don't let, once again, don't let the fact that something costs money stop you. We live in an age now where uh, anything that you want, you can find either free or a lot less money.
if you're willing to dig for it. So that's how I edit photographs. Thanks for coming along. Bless you. I'll talk to you later.